Hey guys, Carson here with the Rip Ranch. Thanks for joining me. Um, if you are wanting to learn about tra tractors, farming, ranching, anything that has to do with that, or just see people do things wrong, you're at the right place. Today I'm just going to show you how to change your saddlebags on your saddle or how to put saddlebags on. The reason I'm doing this is my saddlebags are broke and I just got As a new you can pair. see, my saddlebags are in rough shape, meaning there's a big rip. The purpose of your saddlebags is to carry your lunch or your water when you're out on the horse all day. Um, uh, last time I put a water in this, I didn't get very far, so I'm going to replace them. Maybe I could have got them sewn, but they are kind of a cheap pair that came on a saddle I bought, so I will maybe let my nephew work on them or something, but I'm not going to fix them at the time. I just got a new pair. So I'm going to put those on and I'm going to show you guys how to do it. The first thing is, is I'm going to take my um, raincoat off. purpose of a raincoat is, the name's pretty explicit, it's, you put it on in the rain to keep you a little drier. Because when you're out on your horse and you might be two hours away from the truck, you can't really get there in a rainstorm. So I'm going to take this off. My raincoat's kind of a cool story. It's my wife's family's. It's gave it to me. It's an old World War II coat. Um, I've been using it for about eight years now, and I love it because it's really heavy duty. It keeps me a little warm, and it also keeps me dry. And it came at the right price. So I didn't have to pay a thing for it. Okay, so the way I'm doing this is kind of more of the permanent fix for taking your saddlebags off and replacing them. I don't take mine on and off like they did in the Western movies. I just leave them on. So, as you can see, sorry, I got we're in the tack shed here. Got my coat off, just untied the knots. Next step for me, and I'm doing this one-handed, so I have to stop the video. But I'm going to be taking off these conchos, and I will come back to you once I've got them undone. So I'm just going to give you show you guys a little bit here how this works. Not all conchos are on the same. This is a concho. Um, mine have a couple slits, so the first thing I had to do was loosen up the slit. If you look over here, it shows you how it was. Pulled this out, like I said, in one hand, so it's nearly impossible to do. But I pulled it out. This is what it looks like after you have one hand out, or one, one string out. So you just continue to pull this out. I'll do it until I can't with one hand, which is about right now. So now I'm to this point. So next thing I'm going to do is pull from right here. Pull this string out, and then this concho will be. So I got this undone. Now you can just pull out this. We're gonna undo this conch, this here, and we'll move to the next step. We got that unscrewed. I went and got the screwdriver. Now you just take the leather part off, and as you can see, you got little slits here. So I'm now just going to repeat my process that I did here, do it over here, and I'm not going to make you guys watch, that would get rather boring. We got that part done, now we just need to pull up on this, and get this off the saddle, and you can see that's what the back of your saddle look like. So I'm just going to get these off, and then we'll be with you when I'm putting them on. All right, so what I'm going to do, this saddle pegs I ordered, which I'll go over them later, didn't have the holes for the conchos, so I'm going to just drill me some holes in the spot I think's right. It's probably wrong, and if my dad watches this video, I apologize that he sees me doing all this stuff wrong, but it will work, and that's what's important to me. All right, so I got the first set of conchos on, then I'll do the metal part of it. And we'll go from there. This side I was missing a nail. I didn't have one to replace it, but I got the screw back in. Didn't have the nail. I replaced that nail, put it in, put that in. Next, we're going to put the metal in. Got those on. Now I'm just going to thread it through these holes. You see right there? Just going to thread it through those holes. And we'll be. Okay, I got the one side done, the other side done. But you notice I only got one thing. The other one I had a, a, a cut right here, too, to go through. Um, where these are a lot thicker than the last ones, I'm going to have to just make another slit. So I'll show you guys how to make your own slits that hold them on and make them permanent. Alright, so what I'm going to do is i got a box cutter here. I'm just going to make a cut from 
right there and just go up just a hair on here and do it on the other side and then I'll see how that works. Alright, got my holes cut there and there, just in there. Just make sure you don't want them too long. These don't need a lot of length in these holes to make them. Hey guys, the holes I cut worked out slick. Just remember, don't make them too long. There's no need for them to be very long. Um, they're both on there now. I was going to show you, I found this old saddle in our uh, in our tack shed. I was going to show you most saddles or saddle bags. If you're just buying saddle bags from the feed store or something, most of them will already have this little hole punched in them. So now you know that you can pull out these strings, put the conchos out, put them on this side, and your saddle bags are a little more permanent. Or you can just tie a knot, I guess, whoever rode this, use that. It's a saddle we never use. I don't didn't even know we had this saddle but yeah if you want you can just now you know if you want your saddlebags a little more permanent pull this part of your saddle off undo the string there put your saddlebags on put the concho over it and you have a more permanent and i think it looks better too right. now that i've got mine on i'll just kind of tell you my saddle so you guys know my setup so my saddle is a 15 inch coriani it's a wade um, if you know anything about saddles, Coriani is one of the more inexpensive brands. Um, the reason I like it is because it's inexpensive. You'll learn on this channel I'm very cheap. But it's inexpensive, but it's really pretty good quality for the price. So if you're wanting out to go out and cowboy or trail ride and you don't want to pay an arm and a leg for something that's quality and made, you know, handmade, I'd go on to Coriani and get a saddle from there. I really like their saddles. Especially if you're not an everyday cowboy. You know, I work a full-time job, so I cannot. I'm not on my horse every day. So this saddle's been awesome for me. Um, it's a wade style, so it doesn't have the, you know, the swells. or not, not bigger. I just use these buck and rolls. Really, really comfortable saddle. Um, here's the kind of stirrups I ride. The kind of reason I ride these little bigger stirrups is I like to not wear a real riding boot. Because... A lot of times you got to get it get off and ride fence or walk fence, I mean. So it's nice to have a boot on that you can walk, and these kind of stirrups are just very comfortable. You can get on and off. You can wear, ride in your muck boots or whatever. Um, these these uh, saddlebags, they're honestly bigger than I like. They're quite a bit bigger than my last ones, if you can see. They're bigger than I like, but the reason I got them is they're also made by Coriani. Um... They're very inexpensive for the quality of, of saddlebag. You can look at the difference in the met, in the leather here than my last ones. These are good quality saddlebag. I think they were 140 bucks, which is a way better deal than if you want to buy handmade or go get custom ones. I'm saying nothing bad about custom ones or anything, but I do most of my saddle stuff is a budget because it's all a luxury to have nice stuff. It's not needed for my operation to be great, but... Anyways, so that's why I have these. They're a little big for my liking, but I guess I will be able to pack an extra an extra bottle of water and I'll be able to get fatter because I'll be able to have two sandwiches instead of one. Anyways, that's the tour of my saddle. Anyway, so it's a Coriani. You can get them on Coriani.com, I believe, or CorianiSaddles.com. I think only they said these would take four weeks, and I think they got them to me in two weeks. So just know that you're not going to be able to order online. you got to call in and order. They're kind of an old school company. But I think that's cool because they have some old school, um, they have old school uh, quality too. Really cool, cool stuff. Anyways, uh, there is the tour on how to put your saddlebags on in a more permanent fashion. So in the last video I did, I changed some, I changed a trailer tire without a jack. I had some interest in how I did it that way and why I did it that way. So I'm going to be changing the spare off and putting the normal tire back on. And I'll give you kind of a little more in-depth when I'm not in a hurry trying to look. the tire we're going to change. planned so that wasn't pretty like most things I do but it worked um, I got two boards under there I had a third but it looks like it slid off but it's still off the ground 
Um, most of the time you use a jack to do this. But sometimes you got to load a cows on or and you're on the freeway or highway and you have no way of getting a jack under there or you didn't bring your jack or your jack didn't work. This is a really neat way. I just found these two boards on the ground. They're just scrap boards, nothing special about them. I used them. So now I'm just going to pull this tire off. Um, and we will put the spare on. So I'll show you how I just back off it and then we'll just give it a quick tighten up with the star wrench instead of just the uh, the impact gun. Alright guys, I got it torqued exactly to spec, exactly what it says to do in the owner's manual. I would never do anything contrary. Um, so now it's ready to go. The uh, cool thing about this is if you lose your jack or you're on the side of the road and there's no way to really get a jack under where you're at, usually you can get a couple boards under there. I've done it with some flat rocks before. You just never know what kind of, when you're carrying hauling cows around or you've got a load of horses or you're going up in the mountains you just ne or even on the highway you never know what's going to happen to your tires even if you check them before we've had a load of eight or nine cows and the tire popped and so you just got to kind of improvise and so now you have a little backup even if you don't have some boards with you usually you can find something on the side of the road to jack your trailer up like i mentioned this is probably not the proper way to do it and I'd feel free to roast me in the comments. That'd be great. I'd love to hear reasons why it doesn't work, even though I've been doing it for years. Um, anyways, again, if you like to like these how-to videos and how to do things wrong or the incorrect way, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you think I did it wrong, and we will go from there. Again, thanks for watching. If you like farming, ranching, chasing cows or just watching people do something wrong, you're in the right place.